people think about IoT as, okay, I have a connected device. Uh, as long as it can go talk to the internet, I'm IoT enabled. But there's a lot more things that are involved than just saying that I have a little sensor and it can talk to the internet. And that's where you get into all these things about, I have a lot of information that I can capture through these sensors and all other kinds of IoT devices. But then I want to be able to go and see, how can I give it back to the data center in the cloud where you can do much smarter things? Because with all this IoT data, what people are really looking for is what's the business value I can extract. Exactly. And using that business value, how can I actually transform my respective business? Kumar, you and I have talked a lot about this whole notion of intelligent gateways. I think that is a new term to people. You can elaborate a little on what we mean. When we think about gateways, how did we actually allow a smooth transition path for all these guys to em embrace smarter and smarter systems over time? Right. It's an important part of what the gateway has to do. Absolutely. I, I think you know, one of the other keys, too, is you, know, you look at a lot of this equipment it also has really long life cycles, or it's really expensive. You know, you're not going to rip a transformer off a pole when that thing costs a million dollars and upgrade it. Correct. So you've got to have a strategy where you can get data off that edge device like a transformer. Yeah. And as you said appropriately, right, that's where these intelligent gateways will come right. in. Yeah. The other important part of a gateway is how does it enable a smooth interface, not only just with the cloud, but also with actually peer-to-peer -peer edge devices, right? So these are functionalities that are going to be critical for the ecosystem to be able to go build their own apps and services so that it's easier for them to rely on the fact that they are creating an overall uh, interoperable ecosystem. As we think about the gateways, it has to fit smoothly into what the existing infrastructure is. There's lots of things in factory automation, energy infrastructure, transport infrastructure, a lot of these things that have actually evolved over the last couple decades. Being able to go provide an IoT path for them where they can extract business value from what they have as existing legacy installed base. It's a very important part of what we have to go help through. Over time, as people get smarter about the kinds of usages they can actually go and deploy, the complexity of these usages will get higher and higher up right. the ch chart, right? Mm -hmm. And as it goes higher and higher up the chart, the analytics that they will want, the security capabilities that they will want, the manageability capabilities they will want, all those things, right? demand much higher compute capabilities. We are able to go give them that nice smooth right, uh, upward curve on a family of gateways. Yeah, we need to help people see that the gateways are not just about the fact that the processor moved up the chart. Collectively, what we yeah. did is we moved it up on the uh, operating system capabilities, the manageability capabilities, the security capabilities, so that as they embrace sure. the higher end of usages, the collective hardware plus software integrated platform also, right? provided them much better starting points yeah. for more complex usages. So the, the intelligent device platform, what we've done is we've taken our base operating environments, so both our real-time operating environments and our Linux operating environments. And on top of that, we've built in the requirements that you have for connectivity, management, and security. You've got all these edge devices that weren't purpose-built to be part of IoT. And in a lot of cases, they're going to be using um, many different protocols for connectivity in peer-to-peer -peer networks today or maybe mesh networks. We need to be able to have those communicate with the gateway. So in this gateway, we need to have a robust suite of connectivity protocols um, such that different classes of end devices can hook in. Once they hook in, you want to be able to do things like authentication, right? You need to understand that that device should actually be on your network since you are connecting into your enterprise network and that you have the proper handshake with that device onto the network. You also want to be able to push information back down to those devices. You know, should I determine that the device isn't running properly, it's got some issue, I can push down a patch. If I want to upgrade the device remotely, I can push down and upgrade the software. So you need the vehicles to manage that device remotely. And then last but not least is security, right? We're going to build security into the operating environments, into the middleware stacks. McAfee provides two things in that, right? They're going to provide security to the application layer, but also kind of the eyes into that device. Security before was, uh, was um, uh, available through isolation. These devices were intelligent, but they were living in an isolated world or in a pr very private networked uh, environment. Now as we open it up to public networks, the internet, enterprise style networks, with IP being a standard protocol, we all of a sudden unfortunately open up the door for a lot of risk. Yes. And so that's where McAfee steps up to this, to this proposition and, and complements what uh, Wind River and Intel are doing. You know, we're putting into the system solutions that um, control and lock down the application. So that environment that, that the user has built will continue to perform the function that they designed as they wanted to without any interference from a malware or any sort of yeah. uh, threat coming from the outside. We have the ability to interact with our 
uh, management layer from a security standpoint, see the awareness of the device, is it on, is the security turned on, what's its state, things of that nature. Yeah. That type of telemetry helps the operator through their cloud view of these devices understand the state of their network, yeah. allows them to trust their network and trust the data coming off their network. Yeah. A good example would be like a wind farm. You've got wind farms sitting in rows, yes. and if one of the turbines isn't operating correctly, it's going to disturb the air that's flowing through to the other <coughs> devices that are behind that, right? So if you know that, and you know it's not running correctly, and you can't fix it at the time, yes. you can go and you can actually make adjustments to the other wind farm elements, edge right. devices, to counteract what kind of disturbance are getting to the front one. And this right. is where it gets really yeah. exciting. This yeah. is where you can really drive significant economic gain. Right. To, to this is where you need the intelligence in this system. In Internet of Things, when a, a company builds an implementation, they have a specific goal in mind, but what they'll find is their constituents will all of a sudden see different utilization with that open architecture, communications and security. They can trust that they can now expand the application scope yes. beyond anything they contemplated in the beginning.